push through, I'm accelerate through. <laughs> this this happens. <laughs> I've never had advice never as thought. good as this. It's so thought. concise. <laughs> Morning, Tomo. Morning, Ed. Good to see you again. You too. Welcome to Grimsaw. Another lovely day. Going to do a bit of work with you this morning. Yeah. If you could just give me a little bit of background as to your shooting and anything that you'd maybe like to work on specifically this morning. Um, yeah, just give me some info, really. Sure, Ed. Well, I've been shooting for roughly, I don't know, 10 years, I should think. And like most people, introduced to the sport through going to a local playground, namely here at Grimsthorpe. But then in more recent years, I've moved to doing a lot more on the kind of game scene. So I will do roughly four or five days in the field each year. Sure. Uh, absolutely love it. Um, but like with a lot of people in this sport, would like to improve my technique and just try and kind of build a bit more consistency, really. OK, so looking at it from more game shooting perspective than clays, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. So if we go down to the game shooting arena, get you underneath some dripping birds and have a look, see if there's anything wrong with the fundamentals and any tweaks we can make, um, have a look at you and take it from there. That would be perfect. Brilliant. Cool. Okay mate, so here we are in the game shooting arena at Grimsthorpe. I don't think we're going to start off doing anything off the big tower, because it's not going to be particularly representative of anything you'd be shooting locally to us, no, sadly in no. uh, Leicestershire and Lincolnshire, <laughs> no, uh, more's not. the pity. So we're going to get something fairly straight over the top of you, probably 20-25 yards, and this is just a chance for me to see you in action, get the gun moving, do your thing and let me just have a look at you before we get started. Perfect, sounds good. Cool, okay. Okay, so you've got the gun moving, you've had a little bit of a go. By your own admission, you, you go through phases on the driven of hitting a few and then having a period where you That's struggle yeah. to hit water if you fell out of a boat. Yeah, um, pretty much, pretty in, much. Uh, in your words. So looking at what you've just done there, obviously you can shoot, but there's a couple of fundamental things I think I'd like to try and pick up up and change because yeah. you're very much, you're on them or you're off them. There's, yeah, there's yeah. no middle ground here. Um, and there's two probably reasonably fundamental things I can start looking at with you to change in your game that you can come down here and practice in your own time yeah. that's going to knock onto your driven shooting and becoming a lot more consistent, hopefully. Okay. Yeah. First thing when you're shooting, you're very keen to get in front of the bird. Uh, okay. So when you're mounting the gun, you're inserting straight in front of the target. A lot of the time when you do that, you lose sight of the bird behind the barrel, you yeah. slow the gun down. Don't stop it, but you slow the gun down drop speed and miss out the back. Yeah. Okay, so that's shooting what we call a version of maintain lead and on a driven target, that's a really bad idea. Yeah. Okay, so one of the things I'd like to get you comfortable with is when you mount the gun inserting behind the bird, so you can see the target over the barrel, then use the acceleration through the line of the target, momentum builds up in the gun, you'll finish your shot off a lot better. Yeah. Long story short, it's gonna give you less chance of dropping behind the bird because what you're doing at the moment is kind of building in a little bit of an issue for you. Yeah. Okay, so. I can feel that as well, Ed, because sometimes I'll be kind of ahead, drop behind, and ahead that, again. Exactly, and that's the first thing. Once you jump in front of the bird too early, yeah. the first thing you want to do is back off so you can see the target clear and you get that stop start. Yeah, and that slow in, slow in motion is going to mean you drop out the back, okay? okay? So one of the things you'll be pleased to know with this is it actually gives you more time. You're, yeah. You don't need to be as rushed and as panicked getting in front of the bird. So if you can see the target, mount and try and mount a clear sort of metre, metre and a half behind the bird match it briefly and then you're going to have a long smooth drive through okay. rather than a short panicky shot okay yeah. it's a bit counterintuitive it's a bit more work to do yeah. but it's actually going to feel infinitely slower for you okay, okay. perfect <laughs> okay so we're going to work on a longer smoother shot yeah try and get you away from inserting in front of the bird so let the bird come past your barrel Insert out the back, long, smooth drive through, cover the bird, keep going and shoot, okay? okay cool. Long move for me. So how did that feel compared to what you are doing before? It just felt like there was so much more time to actually come through, pick it up, pull through, pull the trigger. Um, yeah, it felt like you've got four times the amount of time. Perfect, okay. Get a few more of those under your belt just so you can get comfortable with the idea, seeing the target, insert out the back, long drive through, and then we're gonna move on to the next thing I wanna try and do to change you, and then we're gonna combine the two. Perfect. A long, slow move for me. Good, and again, start out the back, push through, perfect. 
would you say that as you're coming into your kill zone, you're starting to feel a little bit tight? A little bit, yeah, yeah, definitely. Fine, okay, so there's something we can do now, which is gonna be adjusting your weight distribution with your stance, that's hopefully gonna give you an extra 15, 20 degrees of movement at the top and lose okay. that tightness. What's happening at the moment, you're quite actively putting weight over your front foot. Yes. That's fine when you're shooting lower driven targets and crosses, but when you come shooting these high birds, as you come into your kill zone, you'll start feeling like you lock up, Right. okay? At the moment, it's not causing you a problem, but if you come on something higher and faster, it's going to have the same issue for you. You're going to tighten up, you're going to slow your gun down, you're going to miss out the back. Yeah, okay? sure, yeah, get that. So all we're going to try and do is rather than go sort of 70-30 over your front foot, try and be a little bit more neutral. Okay. So 50-50, empty gun. That's going to enable you to get your hips into the shot as you come into the kill point, push your shoulders back, and give you an extra 15, 20 degrees at the back of the shot, okay. which should help you on the high birds, finish the shot, drive through, and not drop out the back of the birds for me. Okay, all right? Yep. Start out the back, now drive. Movement, much better, and yep. that's what you want to be working on. For the moment, forget trying to break targets, just get the combination of inserting the gun out the back of the bird, and starting to push your hips into the shot. Yeah. Start working on the movement. Once you get the movement right, the outcome's gonna happen, yeah. okay? Okay. One thing you'll find with doing this is you'll probably have to perceive slightly less lead because you're gonna be building your gun yeah, speed up. Sure. As soon as you come past it, split second pull the trigger. Okay. Right. Pull. Remember, you've got loads of time. Don't try and shoot it out in front. The whole thing about giving yourself more just time. used to be in that. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's just get to give used you, to it, isn't give, it? Yeah, get yourself used to that feeling yeah, of movement. Yeah. It's giving you that bigger window. Out the back, long, slow drive. Yeah. Cover the bird, pull the trigger. Cool. Out the back, slow push through. There you go, beautiful. Out the back, slowly through. Beautiful shot. You're awful at catching shells. <laughs> they are really That's bad. going to be the third bit. We're going to get you down catching <laughs> shells looking like a professional. Go again. Cheers, really good shots. Out the back, slow drive through. Good old boy, right in the guts. You're starting to move the gun well now. Don't go so heavy on your front foot. Yeah. So nice and keep neutral, it neutral. Nice and smooth. Just keep it nice and relaxed. Everything's looking good now. Cool. Perfect. We drive through. Well done. I can just feel that there's so much extra time there, Ed, as you said, and, and actually it feels like I, I can go so much further back by just keeping my weight kind of in the centre. But, you know, one other thing that I often think about is, you know, I tend to shoot with one eye closed, and I don't know if that's the right thing or the wrong thing. It's absolutely fine. There's loads of people who shoot with one eye, but yeah. one of the things that's really key for you is not getting in front of the target too early, because yeah. when you're shooting with one eye, you don't have the ability to look through the gun yeah, like sure. a two-eyed shooter would sense. do, which is why shooting swing through we're trying to minimize the amount of time you're spending in front of the bird rely on a bit of gun speed to do the work for you and it's even more important to get your stance right so you can yeah. get your gun through the bird rather than just trying to punch in front of it yeah. because as you've seen as soon as you just punch in front everything locks up and you stop and you have a tendency of dropping out the back of targets okay so really if you can start learning to work a little bit more on the process if you ever come down and practice don't just try and practice breaking targets but yeah. practice making good moves so yeah. Inserting at the back of the bird, driving through, making it feel as long and smooth as you can. Yeah. So when you start getting into those short, punchy shots, consistency goes out the window, okay? Yeah. If you can work on the process being right, the outcome will come afterwards, yeah, rather sure. than just trying to purely work on the outcome. Yeah, so the, the, the one eye, two eye thing, is that purely just, is it just a, a self? Not everyone can shoot two eyes open. No. You may find that in theory you could shoot two eyes, but you know, for the purposes of today... Whatever feels comfortable. It, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. going to be trying to change too much too soon. Yeah, I'd say sure. we can just look at a couple of the mechanics that you've, you've obviously yeah. been struggling with, yeah. tidy those up, you're good to go. Perfect, thanks mate. So one of the things you should start to notice now is once you get the, the mechanic side of things nailed down, mm. It seems to open up time and space for you. Everything seems slower, Definitely. more relaxed and easier. Yeah. And that's something you want to start understanding from a practice perspective, is when you get the mechanics right, it does feel like it's an easier shot. And hopefully what you'll also find is you'll get better at picking out when you've made a poor move. Yeah. So it's not always yeah. just down to missing a target, but you can sometimes hit a bird with a bad shot. If you can start to understand why it was a bad shot, you can then start rectifying the movement on the next one, yeah. rather than just trying to persevere with something that's imperfect. That isn't going to work. Exactly, sure. and that's yeah. where you'll find your consistency historically 
there's been a little bit hit and miss, pardon yeah. the pun. Um, yeah. You'll have days when everything's working, you seem to be all right. Mm -hmm. You'll have other days where you couldn't hit water if you fell out of a boat. Yeah. And yeah. that's- I definitely not, feel- That's not great fun. Yeah, no, not great fun at all. So one area that is a bit of a minefield, Ed, is just all the different types of game lanes. There's no hard and fast rule to this. It's very much depending where you're shooting, height of the birds, and also time of the year. If we start off with lead options, a 28 gram five or six, super smooth cartridge. This is more than capable of killing any pheasant you're gonna see in the Midlands. As you go further afield and where the birds are bigger and stronger, yeah. you might need to step it up. That's where it goes to something along the high pheasant extreme, which is a high velocity, bigger payload. We're also now starting to have a bit of a transition away from lead. Standard steel, which we've got high pheasant, 32 gram fours. You can shoot that through pretty much any gun, mm. less than half choke. There's also another option, which is a extreme steel, which is not shootable in everybody's gun. No. This needs to be quarter choke or less and through a gun with a fleur-de-lis stamp on it. Yeah. There's also bismuth as an option, more expensive, but you can shoot it through any gun, any choke. Really appreciate the guidance today. No, it's been a pleasure. Um, I'm kind of itching now for the, the next game season to start. Yeah, well, hopefully it's going to give you something to go, mate, after you. Something Thank to you. carry on with, practice when you come down. Just remember, say, keep the basics simple, take your time, yeah. don't rush. One good shot's better than two bad ones, um, and enjoy yourself. Awesome. Thanks Perfect. so much, mate. Well done, mate. Really appreciate it. Good man. Brilliant.